We're still off the record. We're off the record. We're off the record. And when are we live? We're live now. Do you want to do the intro, Robert? Uh, from what I remember, we are the self-publishing roundtable crew, and this is the roundup of the indie publishing news of the week, news and stuff for right. this week. And it is July 17th. Thank you for listening to us on Blab. Catch us each Thursday night as well. But right now we have several topics. <gasps> <laughs> did robert just fall off yes he did <laughs> oh my god so much fun today. we have several topics here that we're going to be discussing as soon as robert Chess joins us again oh there he is and we're back isn't it exciting blab is mm -hmm. awesome. welcome to the sprt comedy of errors i'm Krishan <laughs> keller hannah and that, Erica Cameron. and I am Robert <laughs> Chaz Chute of allthatchaz.com. And here we are. Uh, we have several topics, and I think we better get to them right away before we leave our, lose our audience and Blab kicks us out. Uh, <laughs> our first thing uh, comes up, okay, we're going to throw some uh, numbers for you uh, uh, at this one, but um, we're going to put those in the show notes. But here's the first deal. According to your author earnings report, romance is not only a huge seller, its popularity and sales are grossly underreported. So don't believe what you see in the media. For instance, 89% of all romance sales are digital and more than 50% are self-published. Meanwhile, more than 67% of all U.S. romance sales are not tracked by any traditional industry metric. Furthermore, when we say about 75% of paid ebook sales happen on Amazon.com, we're mainly talking about romance sales. The biggest news may be that romance titles in Kindle Unlimited earn on average 2.5 times as much as those not in KU. Authors with fewer titles tend to go all in with KU, while others uh, with more titles mixed up with more sales platforms. So, holy crap, should we all be writing romance? Discuss. Uh, I already am. Um. <laughs> the short answer is no, but I have mad love for the romance writers. They are leading the way. <laughs> yes. They've always been leading the way. Though. Absolutely. They've always been the most of interest. Well, taking the most risks. And they have a product that, that people have an insatiable appetite for. So why not? And now uh, that. Absolutely true. Sorry? Uh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in in a minute. Mm -hmm. And now that um, they have fully embraced self-publishing and RWA has fully um, embraced self-publishing, it's opened its, opened its doors for a lot of the subgenres, like the manpreg ones and shifters and all kinds of things. If, there, if you have a kink, if you have a love, if you have a fetish, there's a book for it, right? And they're not going to, not everyone's going to admit that they like it, but it's out there and it's for you and there's lots of it. So why wouldn't it lead to the way? And I, for one, am proud of it. Probably won't read any of that. Glad it's out there. Mm. Well, uh, I used to work for Harlequin. And um, I think at that time we published, it was either 60 or 80 uh, new titles a month. Mm -hmm. Um in uh, Erica, I know you say uh, they've always led the way. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, they have the money to play with, uh, a lot of them. Um, and they have this rabid fan base, which uh, it, it's amazing how many people, they, like, they'll, they would read um, uh, at that, when I was involved uh, with publishing romance, um, you know, we had the super fans were legion, and they would read a book a day, basically, often. Yeah. Two, mm -hmm. two a day. Uh, really obsessed, rabid fans. Uh, you know, uh, uh, more so that you know people who are into Star Trek or Star Wars. They think they're fans, not like romance fans. No. So, <laughs> um, I guess uh, the the story is not that they've always led the way. Yes, they've always led the way. The story is that it's hugely underreported and mm -hmm. the um, mainstream media accepts this narrative, which is not true. Um, and this is going to be a theme that's going to come up again in our, our, our next story, where uh, self-published writers are far more uh, successful than 
any mainstream media would uh, want you to think. Mm -hmm. They have a narrator and they are narrative, and they are sticking to it despite the facts. And I'm really glad that uh, Other Earnings has um, blown that out of the water. So anytime any relative at Thanksgiving says, so, still self-published, don't you want the big deal? Don't you want the traditional publishing? No, I do not, because I can do math, and 70% is better than net of net. <laughs> <laughs> What you say is no, because I want to earn money. Because right. <laughs> I want to earn that living you say I don't earn, even though you're asking mm. me for money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, your family don't take you seriously until they know that you're actually earning money from from this, right? Right. <laughs> but, but yes, so the article there's there's so many pretty little graphs, and it was um, essentially saying um, what you just said, Robert, that there's there was the, um, the graphs between non-KU books and KU books and the pricings, what pricing does good. And also that, um, speaking of romance, the biggest subgenre at the moment seems to be the shifters. <laughs> so mm -hmm. not yes, it is. Big, but, but yeah, it breaks down exactly in the graphs what's, what seems to be happening. Well, at least when they took the snapshot on the 5th of May of this year. Yes, all very good news. Uh, so uh, there's also um, a brief breakdown of sci-fi and mystery, thriller, suspense. Uh, you can check uh, all that out in our uh, show notes. Should we go on with the next story? Yeah, okay. Yes, please. Okay. This next story is, it shouldn't be a story, but it's so frustrating, it makes it a story. Uh -huh. So... As reported in the Globe and Mail, a Canadian author is on the road every weekend trying to sell books in every Indigo chapters he can get into. Uh, former engineer Douglas Gardam is living off savings while he tries to sell literary fiction by hand. His dream is to make a full uh, living as a full-time author, and he thinks the way to get there is to get a contract with a traditional publisher. Discuss. <laughs> uh, I really want to talk about this because it so much should not be a news story. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sympathetic to him. I don't, I'm not here. I come not to condemn him, although his, uh, ideas are an abomination unto the Lord. Yes. Uh, the, <laughs> oh man, the, the issue is so say we all the, the issue is, um, I, I'm sympathetic because, uh, I have had this feeling too of, Oh, wouldn't it be nice to do uh, book signings, get into uh, Indigo chapters, Indigo, um, and they're not especially a friendly bunch. I've uh, heard staff uh, chastise authors. Uh, I have uh, uh, in person, not, and they haven't, uh, and they haven't accepted me into uh, a bookstore, uh, despite my uh, awesomeness. Uh, and they have accepted other people who are less than awesome. So um, the, there's there's this the the allure of seeing your your books on a bookshelf. I understand that. Mm -hmm. However, once you have your books on a bookshelf and they're not selling, it's much less alluring. But this uh, gentleman's approach is very much trying to get the, the uh, traditional book deal. Um, as a, the Canadian on the panel, I can tell you, and, and I have worked in traditional publishing, not just for Harlequin, but for uh, quite a few publishers. Um, there are very uh, few Canadian authors who make a living. Uh, if they are um, writing for a traditional publisher. Um, there's Margaret Atwood, and mm, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Robert, Robert J. Sawyer uh, is is awesome uh, in sci-fi, but um, uh, like the, the truth is that he's trying to sell litfic, and that is a very difficult genre to make a living off of. Um, even Margaret Atwood, you know, they say she's litfic, but she's actually a sci-fi writer. I don't care. Uh, I'm sorry, Margaret. I've said this before, <laughs> but uh, this uh, let's let's just let's just lose the bullshit. Right. So uh, <laughs> um, it's so difficult to make a living with a traditional publisher, given their contracts, uh, given the Canadian population. Um, you know, uh, I make all my money in the U.S. Uh, that's just where my market is. And if I were trying to sell books by hand 
at uh, bookstores. It's quite clear from the article that was in, Globe, in the Globe and Mail that, you know, a big day for him was to sell 29 books by hand, mm -hmm. uh, which is really great, actually, um, for a relatively unknown author, which with a, a, a cover that kind of needs help. Um, but uh, Kind of needs help. Yeah, kind of needs help. But he's driving like all over the country and, and blowing the money on gas. Um, he's, uh, he, he needs to get in on the ebook revolution. And uh, I could go on, but I sense that, Erica, you have a few things to say because you were quite shocked by something else in the article. Yeah, um, well, it said that he, um, well, I don't know if he approached them or they approached him, but it was, he decided to get the book published, right? After trying to go traditional, and he ended up going with iUniverse, and I'm not going to have names, sounds really familiar. And it turns out it's an author solutions company. Um, I just, I just can't even, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's just shorthand this for, for viewers. It, if you, it, it's, people wonder, you know, how is it that uh, a really bad cult can still exist in the realm, uh, in the era where Google, you have Google search? So, you know, before you join a cult, Google it, and then you will be warned. So, um, there are certain companies or cults or bad deals where if you Google search them, you will be warned away. Uh, and unfortunately, not everybody Google searches who they're dealing with before they sign a contract. Is that a uh, safe time? <laughs> yeah, well, well, basically, basically they, they are known to take advantage of authors for charging authors to get their books published. Um, and, and, and other dodgy things. There's, there's been a lot of um, lawsuits and stuff like that happening. But I just wonder how much money he ended up putting down up front to get his not so great cover and um, get the, those, those hard copies of those books done. Thousands of dollars. Even, yeah, well, likely. But what was even more interesting was that he said that he's got 86,000 followers on Facebook. I think that was on Twitter. Was it on Twitter, was it? Okay, mm. well, on some social media. And that is something I would kill for. Um, <laughs> but when I went and looked up his books, I mean, he's got like 15 really good reviews just on, on his first main one, right? But his rankings are abysmal. And I'm like... But you've got these followers and your hands. I just think he's just trying to go not just the traditional route, but, well, I guess hand selling your books is trying to go the traditional route. But he just seems to be not focusing on the, the, um, the online internet marketing side of things. I think if he took advantage of that, he might see you know, at least an uptick in the sales rankings. Because it seems that the people do really like his book. I mean, the mm -hmm. reviews were really awesome. Mm -hmm. But, they, you know, but there weren't any more than 15 of them. And, yeah, I think the hardcover is sitting at, like, 8 million or something in the sales ranks. And mm -hmm. uh, the Kindle's at about 200-odd thousand. Well, you know, it's interesting. I Just last week I ran into a guy who... Um, has a traditional publishing contract and he was complaining about his terms and how little he was making um, kind of bitterly actually. And uh, he didn't know that I was an author and I said, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and I asked him a couple more questions and they said, I've got a couple self, uh, a couple friends who are self published, but they've got a garage full of uh, books. And I thought, Oh, those are a couple of idiots who are still in 1968, baby. <laughs> you, you, with with print on demand, you do not have to have a garage full of books, right. and it's it's time to catch up. I mean, this has been going on for a few years now, and pay pay attention, and you'll you'll uh, you'll actually. I don't want. God, it sounds so condescending to say you'll learn something, but you'll learn something. <laughs> <laughs> Krishan, well, you, you were going to say about guys you met at conventions have the kind of same attitude? 
Well, the thing is that it does not surprise a few things. When I when you first brought the story to me, a picture popped into my head. Number one, this was a man. Number two, he was of a certain age. He was over 50, right? And he probably worked at a technical job and probably an introvert, right? I, those things popped into my head. And then when I read the article, wouldn't you know it's the same thing? Because I meet these guys, and now I sound like I'm trying to pick them up. I meet these guys at um, conventions who have a table full of books. They've written, there was one guy who written about 15, 16 books. And they all have those Mylar covers, those glossy covers, and hand illustrated covers by like their, their auntie's neighbor kid. Oh, so they cozy mysteries. They could be, or they could be sci-fi or what have you. <laughs> and they have like a paper flyer with all their books on it. And I asked them, well, do you have an ebook? Well, I don't deal in that ebook thing, right? I don't deal with the ebook thing or it's too complicated or that doesn't work. And I'm, and then romance writers, going back to the first article, are going by going, <clears throat> it don't work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ask me, ask me um, how much I paid for my house with the romance um, money that didn't work, how ebooks don't work. And they don't want to learn the technology. It is too new, it is too foreign to them, right? And they want that dream of seeing their book on the shelf. Because that's all they know. That takes me back to when I was working for a law firm and it was, you know, they'd moved into using computers, but they still had personal secretaries and they were dictating into tape recorders because they didn't want to have to deal with that. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they want a dream that is frankly not there anymore. It is the midlife crisis version of the traditional um, traditional deal dream that you hear a lot of people talking about. Oh, I don't want to self-publish because um, I want a traditional deal where they do all the marketing. That is not the truth. Yeah, right? they're not doing any marketing. No. It's, it's largely on you anyway. Right. Uh, but the, the thing is, these myths persist and... Mm -hmm. I, uh, speaking as a guy who's over 50, I do not understand uh, why there is so much cultural inertia with this. I mean, I love bookstores too. I worked mm -hmm. in traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. I understand the uh, romantic ideas that people have about them, mm -hmm. uh, about the industry. I also understand that um, that is more bullshit. Right. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I do um, think this this guy actually has a shot is is perhaps the larger tragedy is that, you know, he's got good reviews. He's he's certainly got the work ethic. He's just really working hard at the wrong thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because that is his dream. His dream is to have a book in a bookstore. His dream yeah. is to have it's just like me dreaming of having an Etzel. Right. It's a wonderful <laughs> dream. And I might get it someday, but it's going to take a long time because they just don't exist anymore. Right. Well, and it's and old technology. theoretically, I mean, we, we should say that it is possible to uh, get in for self-published authors to get into bookstores. I think in the near future, it's going to be more and more possible. Um, but to get there, you have to take the long way around right now, generally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had my books in bookstores and I really rather see a better pay statement from Amazon each month. Thanks very much. Because yeah. um, ebooks are it. And I, I do, I have had periods, especially on Christmas where I'll make more money on, on print books. Um, but those again are, that's something that people will, uh, do, uh, they'll click, um, click and buy, you know, one click buy mm -hmm. off of Amazon. Um, so it, it's just, uh, it's this, you know, why are you punching yourself? Why are you punching yourself? Why are you punching yourself? Uh, the guy needs to write more books because it sounds like he's a um, pretty good author. He certainly has the obsession and, you know, he wants to be a writer and all those things um, that go along with it. It's just, um, I, because I, I, I hate to, I, I'm not here to scold him. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm just saying, 
wow, man, uh, you got a, a, there's a, a lot of help out there that could, you know, if you took that same energy and put it in the right direction, you'd be much farther ahead. Right. But the issue is that I'm finding is that they don't want to go in that direction. They want precisely what they want. And I think that's what's so frustrating. We could, as an indie publishing community, get you in the right direction. Because in, in the end, what you want to do is make a living from your writing. But it's also because it isn't precisely the way they visualize it in their head. A dream is very powerful. And if you sit up there and your goal is to achieve this one thing, whether or not it's right or uh, whether or not it's right or wrong, if you have your heart set on that, everything else is failure. And I think that that's a sad truth about a lot of people who have clapped on to this traditional um, publishing contract dream is that it's just not there anymore. Well, the good news for this gentleman in particular is that since that arrived on the Globe and Mail um, section, I think he actually has been contacted by uh, people in the AD community. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly there were people at the uh, on the Passive Voice who uh, wrote him to say, hey, man, there's another way. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite hopeful for him. Um, the thing is because we talk to each other so much about our careers, our aspirations, our work, and, you know, uh, all, all the publishing that we do and, and all the fun we're having with it, uh, we kind of ignore the people outside that bubble that aren't aware of the stuff that we're aware of. Oh, I don't. Let me tell you, anytime somebody tells me, oh, I'm writing a book, I'm like, hey, I'm <laughs> part of the indie community here. Are you? Do you have any questions about oh, what do you do in your next step? Yeah, when do you talk to editors? I can help you with that. I can point you to this person and that person. I am always trying to help people um, realize their dream because there's room for them, right? Mm -hmm. There's room for all of us to make that dough. And there's room for all of us to realize the dream. And so, and there are a lot of people like us who do reach out, right? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I guess what I'm saying is that there's a, it's surprising to us how many people out there don't know. Don't know. Still. And to, and to, to call eBooks a new technology, I mean, I feel absolutely right that is what they're thinking <laughs> going, really there's, there's some people who think netflix and streaming is new technology they haven't let go of the vhs tapes so yeah <laughs> okay well uh I, <laughs> how many of those do you still have Jeff? i do not we i do not <laughs> no what i was about to say is if you still get vhs tapes screw you people just forget it <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am all for reaching out. I help a lot of authors too. A lot of people come to me and they ask me to help them, and I do help them. But mm -hmm. screw the Amish, okay? They're on their own. They're on their own. Don't Let's tell move. Michael Bunker that. <laughs> is that what you're trying to say? Well, that's or... the funny thing is Michael Bunker is uh, he he's he's Amish and he gets it. So yes, <laughs> there's hope for there's hope for everybody. If Michael Bunker gets it, how come everybody else doesn't get it? Yes, and he has a movie deal. Okay. <laughs> Wow. He, he theoretically has a deal with a technology he cannot he cannot go and watch. <laughs> okay, moving along. Moving but he on. still gets it though. Let's let's sum this up with one last um, news item. So, so this is this is really interesting, and it's continuing on with that romance thing we keep bringing up today. So, um, Harlequins recently launched a new serialized ebook app for Android and iOS ios which is book breaks and there's hundreds of stories are already available on the app with new chapters being added daily or weekly depending on on the story and it'll let you narrow down what kind of romance you're looking for or maybe the author there's there's um multiple search options and it'll also notify you when the chapter is up and get this it's free <laughs> so so this is really interesting because it's something that, that Kindle, that Amazon has given up on. 
but it's something that Harlequin's now picked up as something for them, for, for their romance readers. So I was wondering, you know, what do we think? <laughs> I think that uh, as we talked about before, romance has uh, rabid fans. So yes, if you are going to plumb a niche, this makes a whole lot of sense. If you're doing it kind of more generally, it might not be as effective. And maybe that's why Amazon abandoned it. Mm -hmm. just, romance serials are usually the serials I see more often, at least on Amazon. Um, serialized sci-fi I've seen a little bit of, but it's mainly romance is, the, is, is really the only one. Well, isn't there, I, I think there has been kind of a um, move away from serials over the last few years. I serialized uh, uh, some, my uh, sci-fi fantasy uh, early on in the process and then I moved away from it because it seemed like readers weren't so much into serialization. Um, and now uh, there seem to be a lot of people who are into novellas because they don't have time for a full novel. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the market is continually in flux, fluid and changing. And mm -hmm. so must we be. Yeah. Yes. Like you said, it does, it does seem like serials may be coming around again. Cause I mean, look at T.S. Paul, he's essentially mm -hmm. writing serials with his Athena Lee stories. And it is cyc cyclical. And the funny thing is when it, when it comes back around, somebody will say, look at this new thing I discovered. Like, uh, they're talking about James Patterson reinventing the novella. It's like, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> it just got a bit quieter, but it never went away. That's yeah. right. Thank you, That's CNN, right. for telling us about the novella. Um, yeah. I really don't think that the serialized um, stories are the news in this article. I think it's the app itself, truly, because I believe that the app for an author, the author app will be the next evolution in indie publishing to the point where um, instead of, or in addition to the email list, you'll be able to have a dedicated, your dedicated audience where you want them. And then they just get a notification on their phone. The next story in the Tales of Alizar is here. Click here to download, or it's already been downloaded, or I can I can upload a video to my app and you can watch it there, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a captive audience and a dedicated following on my own real estate instead of on social media or um, on, on Amazon. Yeah, I think it, it, it'll be um, really uh, the, the, the authors that would probably benefit from this the most would be the ones that are prolific. Yes, like Pro like, Pro not necessarily Amanda M. Lee prolific, but I I could just see her making a killing, releasing a chapter a day. I mean, she writes that much; she right. could release a chapter a day year round. Right, this or even three, not even a chapter a day. The next one, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not even a chapter a day. She could just um have um a app. And have her blog posts and her updates and her mailing list, um, her, the things she would usually send to her mailing list, and then have a notification. The next book and the Witcher Saga or whatever is up and ready. Oh, I just thought of something. When you yeah. finish your book, it goes, oh, you can now go review this on Amazon or something. With a exactly. Link. And once you do that, I'll send you the next chapter of the next book. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I've got to write a review before I can get the chapter of the next book. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's right on your phone. And you do not have to go to a bunch of mail stuff to do it. It just goes, <clears throat> and then you press a button and it goes to Amazon. You put it in, you hit send, back to the app. Oh, next chapter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a lot of... Um... <laughs> There's a lot of variables that you could plug into this application uh, I guess my question is, what is the critical mass that you need? Mm. You know, how big of an email list do you need before you can make that leap? Well, I would have to say, oh my goodness, I would have to say it would have to be really large at this point. You would have to mm. have a very large mailing list because only a fraction of them will go to the app. Mm -hmm. right. But I think a lot of younger readers will probably jump on that app yes. really, really quickly. I mean, yes. mm -hmm. anyone, what, 
what age are we talking? Probably 26 and, and under. So if you're a new adult romance author or anything like that, or any of the other new adult subgenres that have popped up lately, mm-hmm. yeah, I could just see them making a killing with it. Yes, it would be great. I would think that you would have to be prolific, like you said, Erica. You would have to have a very large base. You would have to have a larger catalog, not mm-hmm. only of books, but also of other material. Um, you would also have to have the money to not only build, but maintain an app. So you need to marry mm. an IT guy, like kind of like Chris Fox or something. <laughs> I think he's taken. I think he's taken. I think like, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you could make the app for you, you know, much like my husband takes care of setting up my websites and all the IT stuff. And, right, yeah. and you're going to need him to make sure that the update gets pushed out to it and mm-hmm. that it follows regulations and then can get on the I, I, um, the App Store. I, yeah, the Apple App Store. And you Android. know, I don't think you'd even have to be all that prolific in that if I get a chapter a day, it's, it's, it's I, you know, I, th- I think there's a lot of fatigue out there mm-hmm. of um, subscriptions mm-hmm. where I, I keep on getting uh, Seth Godin's um, uh, I'm on Seth Godin's email list. So, and he, he puts out something every day mm-hmm. and I keep on thinking I'm going to get to those. <laughs> I've been thinking I'm going to get to those. And he writes short too. He's very pithy. That's one thing I liked about his, his, email blasts is he puts out something every day, but it's really, it's, it's good marketing stuff. It's solid. It's pithy. And why aren't I reading it? Because it's always there. It's uh, uh, Mm -hmm. I, I I feel like I'm oversubscribed to too many things and I've got to uh, uh, back off. I'm wondering too about things like um, the, the book uh, advertising services like BookBub and Books.io. And, you know, I, I, I get the ebook luster. I get Delete. more and more of these. Delete. And I'm, yes, I'm deleting them each day instead of looking at them. Mm-hmm. So I'm not alone, I'm sure. Oh, no, you're not alone because I, I do the same things. There are authors who are just like, oh, I forgot I even subscribed to you. Yeah, no, by click. I don't mean prolific as in they push out a chapter a, a day. I'm talking about prolific as in they are consistent in how often they regularly publish. Mm. Like yes. there are some folks who will publish once a quarter, but you know, at the end of that three months, there's another uh, so and so storyline book coming out. And if they run on a regular rhythm, then when that notification pops up on your phone, bloop, and keep on making that sound because I love making that sound. <laughs> <laughs> We've noticed. <laughs> you read and like, oh yes, it is time for that. All right. Oh yes, I'll write the review. Oh yes, here's my new chapter. Yay! Boom. And then you set it down, and then next three months. Bloop. If you're somebody who's doing this consistently and mm-hmm. prolific enough to be able to do that, I think an app would work for you. And that's that's actually a really good point. Is and doing an app is uh, potentially a great idea for some people <laughs> and once they're once they do it it's going to be a real commitment yes. because it's just like doing a podcast you have to do it on time every week <laughs> you know i've got certain podcasts where i look at them it's like it's 4 p.m on friday and friday afternoon and they haven't published their up their podcast yet what the hell is going on <laughs> Because you know, I'm really entitled about stuff I get for free. <laughs> <laughs> People are crazy. People want everything yesterday through the mail for free. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that might wrap up yeah. this blab. We've gone for Who knows? uh well we officially we fifty minutes, but we only started fifteen minutes past the hour. So oh, right. well, that's pretty good then. <laughs> Um, yeah. Just a few uh, housekeeping things. So, if you're an author of mystery thrillers or suspense ebooks, we're running a promotion um, which will run between the 27th and 29th of July. If you're interested in submitting your book for that, go to selfpublishingroundtable.com and there's a pretty little banner at the top that you can click on for all of the details. Um, also, what are we doing? On Thursday, who are we interviewing? Do we remember? I can't. Oh no, I'm doing a weed. <laughs> oh no, not that. Domino Finn, yes. there we go. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> urban fantasy, tough guy, urban fantasy. That's good. Yeah, I booked him too. Um, I was gonna say, you booked him. Great. <laughs> I got too many names in my head, you know, mystery authors. And uh, anyway, don't burn number, don't burn number. Okay, so, um, and if you want the links, um, the show notes will probably be up in a half an hour to an hour, along with the audio download for this again, self publishing roundtable.com. Um, where can we find you guys? I'm at all that shaz.com. Shaz with two Z's, two Z's if you're nasty and we know you are. Ooh. And I'm at alazar.com. Let me see if I can spell it this week. A L L A Z A R.com. <laughs> Yay! It's Golf green applause. It's actually written on your uh, screen there. Right. <laughs> It's not like I don't use this word all the time. And yet. Mm-hmm. 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 There's a low pressure situation. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think that's it. So um, good night, Internet. Good night, Internet. Good night, Internet. <laughs>